Hey friends, thank you so much for being here today. My name is Denise. I'm also known as Hey Wig Sister on Instagram and Facebook. Today I'm here with a Tip Tuesday. I'm here to answer a question that I get multiple times a week. The question is, how do I sell my wigs online? So if you have asked that question or if you have a lot of wigs just laying around doing nothing and not being worn and you'd like to learn some tips for selling your wigs online, then stay tuned for the rest of this video. I will finally answer this question. All right guys, five steps to selling your wig. Really quickly, I get this question all the time and I'm gonna go through this really fast and I'm going to include a companion blog post on my website so that you can go and review all of these steps in the future if you decide you want to sell a wig and you can't quite remember what I said. Here we go, step one. You're gonna to wanna to inspect your wig for any defects. Look over that wig with a fine tooth comb. Make sure you check the lace front, the nape, the ends of the wig, even if you have not worn it, inspect that wig. That will go a long way toward helping you to dispute any claims someone might make later when they receive it that the wig wasn't in the condition that you stated it was in. So don't skip this step. Inspect your wig thoroughly to make sure there's nothing that you need to disclose. Step two, decide where to sell. There are so many different places out there where you can sell a wig. And I have a, a post that I will link for you called Trustworthy Resources to Purchase Wigs. On that post is a section titled Secondary Market. That's a great place to buy wigs. It's also a great place to sell wigs. And in that, I list eBay, Mercari, Poshmark. Those are kind of your typical resale sites. eBay has been around forever. Craigslist is another option. There's also a lot of Facebook groups where you can sell wigs. And they're specifically wig selling Facebook groups. I will list a few of those in that blog post. There are tons more that I have not listed. I highly recommend that you join a few of those groups if you are on Facebook. And if you're not on Facebook, but you're thinking you'd like to sell wigs, it might be worth it to get an account to do that. I think you're going to have a lot more success on Facebook than you will on eBay. I personally do. I think eBay is great for some things, but I think the wig groups are a very targeted market and people are going there specifically to look for wigs. So consider consider both. Diversify your postings. You will increase your odds of selling. Just keep in mind there may be fees charged. Some of these uh, sites are now charging sales tax on your behalf. If you live in a state where that's required, you don't have to do anything to make that happen. It's all done for you, but any fees that are charged are going to take away from how much you actually end up making off of the sale. So familiarize yourself with that. It will vary. Number three, research the prices. I usually go to Google and I search for uh, how much the wig is selling right now at, at a variety of retailers. If you Google it and click on the shopping option, you'll get a whole bunch of different retailers that carry that piece and the price that they're currently offering. Um, another option would be to go to a couple of ones that you frequent. I usually look at Wig Studio One, name brand wigs, and wigs.com. And I see what they're selling them for, and is this a wig that currently has a coupon available? If so, then I, I will take the lowest price that I can find minus typically a 30% off coupon. Most sites have that. And I will price it about... 10% lower than that. So I at least try to go 40% off. Per Actually, I personally go 50% off a lot of the time. It's really going to depend on the wig, the market for that wig, how popular is that wig, how difficult is that wig to get. There's a lot of wigs and a lot of colors out of stock right now. So all of that can help inform what you're going to price that wig at. If it's a gently used wig, I would never sell it for more than 50% off retail, probably more than that, depending on the condition of the wig. Again, do what you think is right. Just know that you, you will want to go and do that research first to avoid someone questioning your price because they can find it cheaper at Wig Outlet or something like that. So do your research. I also recommend when you are pricing your wig that you add the cost of shipping into the price. I personally won't pay shipping if I can help it. I really can't stomach paying shipping. So free shipping, even if that means the price is a little bit higher because they rolled the price into the price, there's something about seeing free shipping that makes a difference. So I highly encourage you, once you get your price set, 
increase it by five or ten dollars if you want to recoup that shipping cost if there is a kind of a drop dead amount of money you need to put in your pocket from this sale versus stating a price and then saying shipping will be extra whatever you can do to eliminate the back and forth with your buyer to try to determine what that final price is the better it's going to be you don't want to cause this to drag out people don't check their email all that often so somebody's going to send you a message and say i'm interested it could take you an hour or two to see that then you respond great here's gonna you know tell me where you live so i can figure out the shipping and here's gonna be your price now you have this back and forth that could take hours and hours you might have gotten a couple of other inquiries that you've now had to place on hold. Try to avoid that. Leave no questions about the price. List your price. That includes everything. Make it a lot easier on yourself and on the buyer. That's my suggestion. Number four, take pictures. Lots and lots of pictures. Best practice is to have pictures on a person. I highly recommend that you take pictures of yourself wearing the piece that is going to be tremendously helpful in helping you get that wig sold. Uh, I really struggle buying wigs that I can't see on a person. Um, the second best option would be to put it on a mannequin head with a face, something like one of these. That can be really helpful because then you can at least visualize what a wig will look like on a head, how it hangs, how it lays. So definitely, if you're not going to be able to take a picture on you, which I highly recommend, next option would be to put it on a mannequin head. If you can uh, spend the money to purchase one with a face versus a foam, styrofoam, or, or even the uh, plastic collapsible ones, even better. It is so hard to see what a wig looks like on one of those plastic collapsible stands. And most of the time it makes the wig look sad and lopsided and misshapen, even if it's not. Think about what retailers do when they're selling products. They stage their items. They make them look, they put them in outfits. They give them uh, the best possible lighting. That is what you want to try to do with your wig as much as possible. If you have tried to sell wigs in the past and they don't sell, think about how you present them. That may be the number one barrier to people wanting to purchase from you because they can't see they can't visualize how great that wig might actually look because your presentation isn't allowing them to do that. I also highly recommend that if you are selling a wig with a lace front, you take a picture of that lace front. I almost always flip the cap inside out and take a picture of that lace front so that you can see the condition that that lace front is in. Likewise, if it's a long wig, take a picture of the nape, take a picture of the ends of the hair. Not only is this going to help the buyer know what they're getting, but this is your protection. If someone claims that you misrepresented an item, that they're maybe disputing their payment to you because they say you didn't sell them a good piece, the more pictures you have, the more you'll be able to dispute that. And let's face it, friends, there are dishonest people out there that are looking to take advantage of us. And if we aren't our best advocates and protectors, nobody will be so if you take a picture of that lace front and then that person sends a dispute saying you sent them a, a wig with a ripped lace front you can go back to those pictures and say well this is the picture that i posted there's no rip here likewise they say the ends are all frayed you can go back to a picture and say i took a picture of the ends and here's what they look like and if they're disputing it through PayPal, you might have a good chance of PayPal siding with you because you have the evidence that you need. They can destroy a wig if they want to to prove their case. You don't have it anymore. All you have are those pictures. Take lots of pictures. Make sure you have them both for the buyer and for your own protection. The last step then is to list it. So there's lots of places, like I said, to list. I will have those listed in the companion document on my blog. I will also link a template that you can use. A lot of the Facebook groups have a specific template that they want you to use uh, to post the wigs. And I happen to like the template, so I use it on my own website. And so I'll link that. It's just a great place for you to start. And it has all the details that anybody will need to know about the wig. So if you just follow the template, you've got everything that you need to list. And once you've listed it, I highly recommend that you do not delete that listing until the person has received it. 
and confirmed that all is well. Again, that's your protection if they were to claim something that isn't true. You can go back and show what was posted because it's still posted. If you delete a post on Facebook, you've got no proof of what you had posted and what you had shown. And so I highly recommend you keep that uh, until it's all settled before you delete it. That way that's your protection if you ever have to go against a payment dispute. The last couple of thoughts I have are about some other factors such as what payment options should you accept. I highly recommend that you use uh, PayPal. It's just kind of the most universally known and accepted payment method and it has the best protections for both you and the buyer. I know people don't want to use have um, have to pay the fees that the so it has two options goods and services and friends and family and I do see a lot of people say they accept friends and family only because they don't want to pay the fees. I understand that personally I hate paying all these fees but that does provide protection for the buyer and for you. Granted, the protection is more skewed toward the buyer, but as long as you've done all of these things that I've recommended, taken lots of pictures, had really good descriptions, and you still got all of that accessible, you should be able to defend yourself against a fake a dispute. But it is a protection that you wouldn't necessarily have with some other options. Venmo is another option. Zelle is one I, I've, I've used a few times with Wig Sisters, uh, usually through bank apps. Um, but again, PayPal is going to give you the best protection when you don't know the person on the other end of the payment. And finally, don't be afraid to reduce the price if it doesn't sell right away. It is sometimes just a gamble. You're not really sure what the best price is. You're just trying to get the most you can for the wig to try to recoup most of what you paid. Um, it's very rare that you can recoup everything that you paid. I mean, you know, people just aren't willing to pay the same price that they can pay at a from a retailer. So there is a, a measure of loss here, but keep in mind, you're getting education every time you purchase a wig, you try a wig on. So even if you can't get your money back, I would chalk up whatever loss you take toward your wig education, better purchases in the future. I hope this helped you guys, and if you are someone who has wondered about this or maybe asked me this question, now you have my best practices for selling a wig. I think it's a great option for those of us who like to purchase a lot of wigs, try a lot of wigs, but maybe don't always want to return them all. It just gives you, a, again, a chance for education and to maybe get some of that money back. Lastly, if you maybe have gone through this whole thing and you decided, I don't even want to mess with that, that's just too much, there are places you can donate wigs. There are two Facebook groups specifically that accept wig donations and they're wonderful. Sister to Sister Blessed with Hair to Share is run by Wendy and a bunch of admins and she is, that's a great group. And so is Flaunt Your Wig. And that's run by Joyce, and she has a lot of great helper admins as well. I will make sure that those are linked as well in the bottom of the blog post in case you decide you just want to donate. I do accept donations myself. I'm not anywhere near able to handle the volume that they can handle. And a lot of the times the donations I get are more toward helping my channel, sometimes for giveaways and donations, but a lot of times so I can do reviews, so I can do education. So if you ever think you have a wig that would be great for me to be able to review, maybe do some teaching and education on, then let me know. I'd be happy to accept a donation. But just know that there are options out there if you decide you don't want to sell a wig. All right, guys, that's it. Longer than I had hoped, but not as long as my first version of this, which was like 30 minutes long. So this is much better. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, comment, interact with my channel so that it helps YouTube say, gee, she must be doing something good. Let's recommend her when people search for wigs. That would help me out tremendously. I'd appreciate it very, very much. I love you guys. I hope you're doing well. I'll talk to you soon.